In Know Your Enemy, I explained that 25th of December was not the real birthday of Jesus, but that we use that date because it was when the pagans used to celebrate the birth of the sun god. The Catholic Church in Rome just came along and said, well, we're never going to get people to give up that date. It's too embedded in culture, so let's just Christianize it. I also explained that the word Easter comes from the Babylonian fertility goddess Ishtar or Asherah and that the secular elements of that celebration are rooted in paganism, things like the Easter bunny and Easter eggs. I then went on to say that even though all this was true, Christians were in fact free to celebrate Jesus' birthday on 25th of December if they wanted, and they were free to celebrate his death and resurrection every spring too, although I did suggest we should change the name of our holiday from Easter to something more appropriate. I said it was okay to do this as long as it was done as unto the Lord. I expected retaliation and arguments on many aspects of Know Your Enemy, but I didn't expect that this would be by far the biggest controversy of the series. How can you condone people celebrating Jesus' birth and his death and resurrection on pagan dates, people asked? Well, of course, there's no such thing as a pagan date. All days of the year are neutral, which means they can all be used as unto the Lord. So rather than apologise for our freedom in Christ, let me go one step further and say that actually you can celebrate his birth any day of the year you like. March 16th, June 9th, November 21st, pick one. In fact, you can celebrate it every single day of the year and you can certainly celebrate it on December the 25th. We are not bound by any laws to any specific days at all and are free to use them to honour and love God in any way we wish. Please listen to the words of Paul when he says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink, or in respect to a holy day, or the new moon, or the Sabbath days. To the Romans he wrote, Some think one day is more holy than another day, while others think every day is alike. You should each be fully convinced that whichever day you choose is acceptable. Those who worship the Lord on a special day do it to honour him. Those who eat any kind of food do so to honour the Lord, since they give thanks to God before eating. And those who refuse to eat certain foods also want to please the Lord and give thanks to God. To those in Galatia he wrote, why do you want to go back again and become slaves once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of this world? You are trying to earn favour with God by observing certain days or months or seasons or years. Are you doing what you're doing to love and honour God with a clear conscience? Then fine, go ahead and do it, and let no one judge you for it. You are following the law of Christ and you'll be blessed for it. If your conscience bothers you and you don't want to celebrate Jesus' birth in December, then pick another day and do it then. That's your freedom. What matters is whether your motivation in using those days is to love and honour God. How that intent expresses itself is really up to you. Let the Spirit guide you in these things. Now notice how careful I'm being with my words here. I am not condoning Santa Claus, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the Easter Bunny, the secular icons of those days. What I am condoning is your freedom in Christ to celebrate and love him on any day of the year you wish, including December the 25th. All neutral things can be used for good or evil. It was the first thing we learned in this series. So use your freedom in neutral things for God's glory and the benefit of others, thus fulfilling the law of Christ. Can we honestly say Santa Claus is helpful in our efforts to focus on and love Christ? Is he not, in fact, much more of a distraction? Doesn't he take us away from Jesus rather than towards him? If we find ourselves talking about Santa rather than Jesus during the festival, we're actually missing the point. Is there any sense in which the Easter Bunny helps us focus on and honour Christ? Is it not much more of a distraction too? Can we honestly say we're putting Jesus first when we make Christmas about Santa Claus and Jesus' resurrection about a fictitious bunny? I think it's clear that we can't. The character of Santa Claus appears to have descended from Scandinavian gods and through him and the Easter Bunny, Satan has very sneakily created secular parallels from pagan origins that steal the hearts and imaginations of children and eclipse the saviour in their minds. The celebrations that mark the greatest events in history have been marginalised by a fat guy from the North Pole and a chocolate dealing rabbit. Whenever we place something in the position that God should occupy, it's called idolatry. We are guilty of idolatry when Santa, the Easter Bunny and secularism bumps Jesus from being the central focus of our celebrations. 
Think also about the way the world has commercialized Christmas and the stress it brings. Is there any sense in which that brings us closer to Jesus? I think if we're honest, we will say the answer is no to that too. And if that's the case, we're not doing those things unto the Lord either. We're actually just following the world into consumerism, materialism and greed. Let's not lose our focus and let's not just ask what we can get away with, but instead ask how we can love God the best. Paul writes about our freedom saying, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Use your freedom in the most beneficial way. Another most important point is that you are lying to your child when you insist Santa and the Easter Bunny exist, which contravenes the moral law. Consider if that is beneficial for your relationship with them. Indeed, is sin ever beneficial? And when the child discovers that you have lied to them about Santa, would they not be entitled to question whether you have also lied to them about Jesus? You might be putting their future faith at risk. Atheists would seek to put Santa and God in the same bracket. We should be careful not to help strengthen the connection. It seems the best option is to be honest about Santa's mythology and to be honest about God's reality to guard against confusion. At any rate, let the Holy Spirit guide you in these things. React to his promptings. Let's examine our hearts and be honest in our appraisal. Let's make our holidays about God and others, friends and family, thereby living by the law of Christ. I think we'll discover that those are the things that truly make the holiday special anyway. Now I understand some people may want to celebrate Jesus' birth at its correct time in the calendar, which would be around the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles in September or October. If that's your desire, then by all means feel free. You may even find that incredibly beneficial. The Jewish feasts are actually prophetic. Therefore, if we connect our present holidays to those ancient feasts, we will come to a greater understanding of the present and the future. If the Holy Spirit prompts you in this way, then follow his leading by all means, and let's have a free discussion about it. But in the meantime, don't be so irrationally legalistic in neutral issues by insisting that others are going to hell for celebrating Christ's birth in December. That's the same kind of nonsensical, cold, loveless thinking that saw the Pharisees fighting with each other about how many jugs of milk they could lift on the Sabbath. People are free in Christ to express their love how they choose on any day they choose. What matters is the heart. Now some people say that because Jesus didn't specifically command that we should celebrate his birth or resurrection, we shouldn't celebrate the occasions at all. If that's your position, you are still locked in the old Judaic mindset of waiting for God to set rules and laws so that you can meet their minimum requirements. You have missed the whole message of the gospel. It was the law of Moses that said, here are the minimum requirements, so meet them. Under the law of Christ, they're taken away and we are to have this new mindset where we proactively think of ways to express our love for God and others spontaneously, authentically and extravagantly. Why wouldn't we want to celebrate the greatest events in history and thank Jesus for his gift of grace? It's a natural expression of love for him. Worship him freely. Let's not be like the Pharisees and condemn each other for it. Finally, let me also repeat what I said about Halloween and Know Your Enemy. Although October 31st is a neutral day which we can use to honour and love God, the Halloween celebration itself is very simply an unavoidable glorification of evil, fear, darkness, Satan, demons, witches and horror, all of which is the very antithesis of everything Jesus stands for. Therefore, there is absolutely no sense in which we can celebrate those things out of love for Christ. It's a complete oxymoron. It's like saying we can honour our wives by sleeping with another woman, or like saying you can curse or lie or steal unto the Lord. Let's not fool ourselves. John Muncie said, You'll never be able to speak against evil if you're entertained by it. I think if we examine our hearts honestly, we'll discover the real reason why so many Christians don't want to give up Halloween is because we're simply entertained by evil. Remember, our freedom is not freedom to do what we want. That's the law of Satan. That's lawlessness. Our freedom is rather to love God and others freely by the leading of the Holy Spirit. But please, do enjoy your freedom under the law of Christ to celebrate his birth and resurrection on any day you wish. And if there are other days that are meaningful to your walk with the Lord, then by all means mark those too. Don't let legalists look down on you for it.